I'm going to jump in. I'm just going to touch base on some WIPA news first, and then we'll jump into a really awesome conversation with Leslie. Um, I'm sure people will jump in, but like I mentioned, hey, everyone, Daniela here. I think I know most people on this call, um, but if not, I'm the current VP of WIPA New York. We're so happy to have you here. And throughout this call, if you have questions, any thoughts, please feel free to chime in. Um, if you wanna have your video on, please do use the chat option. One thing uh, I just wanna talk about. So on our last call, we brought up that WIP, what WIPA is doing on a national level, as well as on a local level with regards to addressing diversity and inclusion and things that we are and have been made aware of um, through everything that's been going on. And one of the things is a committee that WIPA National is working on creating that is gonna be focused specifically on diversity and inclusion and making sure that as an association, what we are doing with education at the forefront is taking that into account. And uh, we had one of our board members, Andrea Freeman, as our rep on the call, I believe last week it was. and. It's still a work in progress. One of the things that will likely come out of this is that we're going to be pulling on a local member to be in that position on the committee um, on a local level, but also representing nationally. And it's going to be focused around education, marketing, community relations, everything to make sure that we are keeping in mind not just the people that are being brought into it, but the topics and how we're communicating and what is coming out from the association to the industry. On that note, uh, so right after this, actually at 4 p.m., there is a the, the fourth installment of the state of the industry that WIPA has been hosting since the start of COVID. And one thing that, so one thing that's been brought to my attention, but also being on that panel is that it is a, it is a room, so to speak, a Zoom room of about, I think it's eight of us from across the country. We happen to all be white female entrepreneurs in the wedding world. And Shock. Shocking, shocking. Um, but that being said, I, I wanted to bring something up because I brought this up to National as well as a few other people from, the, from our chapter brought it up. And there, there are some really thoughtful, you know, thoughts put into this and, and really um, they, they have been thinking about it. So to start, the state of the industry call started in March when COVID first hit with the purpose of the chapter leaders representing their regions to educate the rest of the industry and obviously the rest of the chapters on what's going on and how we're responding to COVID specifically. And it's been consistent through the last three or so calls leading up to this one. They specifically wanted it to be the chapter leaders so that we could talk on behalf of our chapters and what we're doing each individually as a local chapter, but also you know, representing our areas. And so they decided to keep that consistent because chapter presidents and VPs are the ones that are part of that leadership. That being said, as it's very clear, there is very little diversity in our boards across the country. And instead of just you know saying, we're just gonna pull someone from the chapters, what we're doing and what they're doing on a national level is this outreach on a, on a more local level to say, we're working on it, right? We're, we, know that we, haven't, we know that we have a challenge right now, that we, that we have a problem, so to speak, and that we need to address it. And we've talked about on our level, you know, from membership that we're gonna be doing more proactive outreach to make sure that our board is more diversified so that this doesn't happen in the future. So that's all to say it is a work in progress. And this is step one of many more steps to take. And that's that's where WIPA is kind of at their stance right now. So just wanted to let everyone know where we stand on that. Kind of very appropriate as we dive into a full conversation on diversity and inclusion in the wedding industry and what we can do. But if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'm here. I'll be here the whole time. I'm going to pass it over to Priya now. Hey guys. How's everyone doing? Uh, so I just wanted to introduce, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Priya. I'm the Director of Education for the WIPA NYC Board. Um, and I just wanted to introduce Leslie, who is beautiful and red today with her sparkling smile. Um, and so Leslie Short, 
uh, brings many decades of experience, um, and she is the owner of the Kavu Group. Um, and for those of you that don't know what Kavu means, it is an aviation term, which means visibility unlimited when pilots get to like a certain point. Um, so those are resounding uh, themes in her podcasts, in her lectures, in her conversations about diversity and inclusion. Uh, she has tons of event experience. Um, she is also the, the owner of KIM Media, which designs and produces luxury and domestic international events. Uh, she has been in the event industry for quite some time. Uh, she's also a chaplain activist, certified mental health aide, um, certified mediator, basically just call her if you need her for anything. Uh, <laughs> and she um, has a book that is coming out January 2021 called They, Them, uh, Making It We and Us, and just a realistic approach to diversity and inclusion. Um, so she's very well versed on this subject of diversity, inclusion. Uh, she has a uh, tons of experience in the wedding industry and can shed some light on that as well. Um, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Leslie Short. Hi, everyone. Thank you for, for that. Thank you, everyone. So I'm really happy to be here. I was pleasantly surprised and I see some faces I know. Hey, Sharon. Um, so I see some, you know, I was pleasantly surprised to receive the email asking, would I be willing to speak to the group? And you know, we are at a time where every company is examining what they're doing, how they're doing it, why they're doing it. And the best thing I can say is to stop knee jerking it. Um, this is not new. Um, you know, as I am used to being the only black person in the room, I'm used to being the only black person in the country when I was, whether I was designing events or when I, my first career as a ballet dancer or sometimes when I go to speak about diversity and inclusion, that is not a big deal, okay? I, I don't get off on being the only one. How are you accepted into that room? The wedding industry has always been very close and very tight. The event industry um, has, has been that way. I don't believe it's a lack of and so when I say it, when I say black, I am saying black African American. There are people of color. I, I want you all to understand that the, the dimension there is black, and that's the conversation today. There are people of color, and there is diversity and inclusion. Okay, it all falls under the diversity and inclusion, but the knee jerk reaction, as we all know, has been to Black Lives Matter. And to separate that so we have context in our conversation, Black Lives Matter is an organization. When I'm speaking to you, I'm letting you know that my Black life, me waking up every day, that I matter. I matter whether I'm doing events, I matter if I'm doing, walking down the street, I matter if I'm doing a wedding. You know, most of my weddings, and I was thinking about today, like what, was my, what has my career been in the wedding and, and event industry? I've done two black weddings. I've done hundreds of weddings, most of them Jewish, most of them international. I've done two. So it's not about saying, oh, we should hire someone black because that couple is black. The conversation should be, who is the best vendors? Who are the best people that will connect with the couple that understands culture? When I need, I just did a huge uh, wedding in Greece, I guess probably it's a year now. I hired someone that was Greek to work with me. She spoke the language, she knew the vendors. We worked well together. We spent a lot of time together. So we have to not be worried about where's our money and oh, we only make so much and we don't want to share it. If you get the opportunity to work with any culture, Bring on a partner that can help you. I did a lot of Chinese events. I do not speak Chinese, but I was considered the Chinese expert because of living in Asia, because of working with them for so long. But there was one venue that no one wanted to help me. When I say no one wanted to help me, when I asked for a ladder, they looked at me and would walk away. I'm not gonna say that was a black thing. I was just gonna say, they weren't messing with me, <laughs> okay? The trick was, when I went back the second time, 
I called a friend of mine that spoke Mandarin. Now she's a doctor, but she loves arts and crafts and to make stuff pretty. So I was like, you want to come and hang out with me and, and like set the tables and do stuff? And she was like, yeah. And when my man said to me, when I asked for the ladder again, he was like, hmm, and walked away. I said, uh, not this time, my friend. I was like, Annie, I don't need you to talk to your man. And Annie hit him with the Mandarin and he looked at me. And he was like, ah, oh, very smart, <laughs> very smart. And so he was my best friend the rest of the time. I've never had another issue out of him. So it's about understanding that partnerships, and I'm a big one on this, collaboration will get you further. When I first started to walk down 27th Street to buy flowers, no one wanted to sell flowers to me. And that was the heyday of events and weddings. And it was really because I was black. There was zero other reason. Because someone finally said, we never thought you actually had $30,000 to pay for flowers. That's how the lack of black designers walking down 27th Street is to buy flowers. That's the lack of diversity. Now, I don't like the word diversity. In my head, we're all diverse. If we ask each of us something, we're all diverse regardless of skin color. But there is a diversity of thought. There is inclusion is not inviting me into the room. If you really are about inclusion, I'm in the room and you're making introductions in the room. I've never personally had that issue because I will speak to anyone and I will walk in and I'm going to say it because it's my right to be there. But for those coming up within the industry, and this is what I've heard, they do not feel welcome. They don't feel welcome in the, in, in the industry as a whole. They definitely don't feel welcome in the wedding industry. Probably about four or five months ago, I did a pot, I did a uh, interview um, doing this with, with Liz on diversity and inclusion in the event, uh, event industry. And do you know she was the only person that wanted to have this conversation four months ago? Because you don't have to think about black folks. You don't have to think about other event designers. I get it. Everybody is trying to run and get their job. But in today's society, where we are, look around and see what does your staff look like? Don't have a staff, I get that too. Who are the people you're bringing on for consultants? What's the room look like? What vendors are you pulling? Again, if I hired someone when I first did the first wedding I ever did because I didn't one, want to do a wedding. Two, it was four locations in one day. No, it was not an Indian wedding. Yes, it was a black wedding, but it was also at one of the oldest black historic churches in New York City. There was a lot of celebrities coming. I spoke to the planner and I said, I need you, I would like to start bringing you to the church. You need to understand cultural, what's going on. Because they all, I want them to accept you because I'm gonna be running around all the place. I need you to be the lead on the wedding side. I will design and produce everything else. I spent a lot of time sitting and speaking with her and bringing her in. The issue was, the day of, in the night before the rehearsal, the day of, she had not one black staff member, not one, at the oldest black church there is. She had not one person of color anywhere on her staff. This was after months of having this conversation. I had to call the night before and beg a friend to come work at the church because I knew she would not get the respect that she deserved as the planner for the church because she did not give them the respect. So when you're looking out, I mean, look at the industry as a whole. I always go, how many lighting companies do you know that are black designers? How many caterers? When you look around, do you request a multicultural staff for your catering? I know I do, always have. And I'm doing luxury events where no one's thinking about that, but I have always thought about that. I want the best ones, Period. It's about your talent. But I want to always make sure I represent the world for which we live in. And if I were to work with a client that did not want that, then that's not a client I need to be working with. And not at a time, they wouldn't have hired me. But here's what I hear. Oh, no, not you, Leslie. You're not one of them. 
So when you have your language to point out where someone that you're comfortable with that is black or of color and you say to them, you're not one of them, what does them mean? It should be, you are one of us. We are within this industry together. Everybody's trying to find clients. Don't you think, especially now where we are, to partner together to look to see who is like-minded, diversity of thought, but can bring different skills? Because let's be honest, how many weddings are each of us going to do? So yes, at us, going to do, and I don't even do them anymore, going to do in the next couple months, in the next six months, in the next year. So you're really going to need to understand how do you build your business with new and unique partnerships that not because you're not going to partner with someone because they're black or because they're a person of color, but because you, you've done your research and you see their designs and you're like, wow, I think we can do something together. Why don't we do some pitches together? That only makes you stronger. It never makes you weaker. And have the conversation. It's okay to have the conversation about race. If you don't know how that conversation, I'm going to advise this. You probably shouldn't ask too many black people you don't know right now because everybody's tired. <laughs> That's why I'm sitting here. I want all the questions that you have. I will answer as many as I can. It really is about expanding a beyond your current culture. And when I say that, that means diversity of thought. You know, if you don't know what jumping the broom is, to me, then you're not, you actually are lacking in the knowledge of your own for weddings. Because I know when it's time to break the glass, I know when it's time to walk the rice for Indian weddings. I know tying of the hands. I as opposed to you all had to study every single culture in order to be ready to do one wedding. As you never have to think about where do I order a broom from? Because nine out of 10, you're not gonna do a black wedding or someone's gonna say, I wanna jump the broom. And then what's the, the relevance of jumping the broom? So it's time to take a moment to, to, to study other cultures, to expand your business, to expand yourself, because you can't stay. Now, listen, you can do whatever you want, so I don't wanna say you can't stay, but I would advise for you to build your business by adding additional diversity of thought and culture into your business. This is not going away. It's being called out, industries are being called out. I'm not a big one in always calling people out, but if I see a pattern, and the wedding industry is a pattern of it being, in the beginning, honestly, very white, very male, very gay. Then it was very white, very young, very white, young female. Six years ago, I went to a major hotel and they looked at me and said, you're the second black designer that's ever come through the doors. And I said, what are you talking about? We're in, what? And they're like, Preston Bailey and you. The wait staff came to me and said, I can't believe you're here. That's ridiculous for where we are. But that is what the industry is. It shouldn't be black makeup artists and black hairstylists and black designers. But you need to have a list of specialty. You do need to have that list because your white hairstylist may not be able to do black hair. So don't suggest that. But if you know that there's someone that does know have that talent, because it is a different type of talent, then you want to start making those relationships now. This isn't about only, but you have to look within yourself and decide who am I? What do I offer as personally and as my business? that someone wants to partner with me. We're not here to teach you how to get along with black folks or how to do black weddings, but we're here to partner to be a stronger industry. And that's where my concern is, is to continue to build an industry. Because another turn or another hit, how is this industry going to survive? 
You can only do so many Zoom weddings. How does that help you? Like they're great, but how do you make things pretty over Zoom? I have ideas, we know how to do them, but is that going to really build your business? Is that gonna strengthen an industry? So Hollywood is being called out at this moment for not having not only black, you know, directors and producers and all of that type of thing. Also, what I want to see is internships. When you're bringing someone in, now I say internships very loosely, you know, in the wedding industry, it's like, hey, come work for me for free. Um, and you'll get, you'll get to eat. Um, you know, look around and see who you're asking. Bring in the young talent. Give opportunity. I know we stick together. You notice I keep using the word we, because that's how I've always worked. But I do not believe the industry has worked that way. You know, I, I did a wedding and I'll never forget it was a Jewish wedding. And as guests were coming in, I was greeting, my staff was running around and I was taking the cards and gifts. And I remember the family went over to the, to the father and said, you know, whispered, I gave the card to the, you know, the, the African American woman. And the father looked and said, that's the only person that you should be giving a card to. And they were so thrown back and they were like, really? She works for you? And they're like, really? She's amazing. And again, was so shocked, some of the guests, because they don't see us in that position. We're here. We're in the industry. How do we build our industry into looking at different ways that you get to add on, not only within your staff or in your consultancy, but in your, on your list of vendors to look at and speak to. How do I get invited to a lot of stuff? I get invited to most stuff. I get invited to so much stuff. I don't go half the time, but I've heard from other black designers, other black things that we're never even invited. They don't get invited. So how are you expanding if you're not even offering and now when you do reach out, it's not there. You can be honest saying, listen, I'm taking it upon myself to diversify my business. And I want to start having conversations to see who I work with best. Some may have an attitude You're like, oh, now you want to see me? Oh, now you hear me. Somebody had to die for you to, for you to, for you to get invited to a cocktail party. And you know what the answer should be? Yes. Unfortunately, I just picked my head up and I'm ready to do different and I'm ready to be better and I'm ready to diversify. I understand. I'm trying to learn. I'm not asking you to teach me, but what I'm trying to do is, is build a stronger bond. If anyone faults you for that, that's on them, that's not on you. But people are tender right now because everyone's calling. Can you talk? Can you talk? Can we meet? Can we meet? Oh, come on now. I was black last week too. I was back. I was black three weeks ago. I won't say how many years I've been black. It's been 50 something, but we leave that alone. So it's not something new. We've been here. So on your approach, make sure there is added value on both sides. And that is, that is the biggest, I think, and added value is not always money. It's your spirit. It's who you are. You know, some of the ladies that they, they'd already seen me years ago speaking, Adam and I, I'm in love with Adam. He is, you know, I have the biggest crush. Four emails in and I was like, yo, Adam, you are my man. You are my kind of person. I love, it's about your spirit. So take the time to send out an email. Take the time to invite and say, hey, will you join us on a webinar? Before you ever ask him to join the organization. Can you, we would like to invite you to see who we are, and see if you would like to join. There's no pressure. We're just opening our doors. It's time. It, it, not that it's time, because that makes you look, but yeah, it's time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you want to open up for questions, or do you want me yeah, to? Yeah, absolutely. And I have a few that came in on the back end that I'd love to ask also. And, and you kind of answered some of them, but I think one of the biggest questions, and, and you mentioned this just now, but is, we're, we're in this kind of tender time, you know, sensitive time, and how do you start that conversation, right? Because you don't want it to be in kind of like what I just mentioned with the WIPA call, the national call, where 
you know, we realize that there is an issue, but it's how do you start that conversation? And I know you mentioned that you, you just have to start it. Like you just have to go in. Um, but I'm curious. And, and one of the questions that came in is, you know, do you, who do you start with? Right. Do you start with people that are in your network and kind of reach out from there? Or is it, you know, kind of, I don't want to say cold, but kind of cold, like where, how would you recommend that we go about it? I think it's the individual, how, who you are. So I, there's no one size fits all. Uh, but if you have a network and there may be something that someone that you've crossed a few times in events and you said hello and you had that, you may just want to reach out and say, you know what? <sighs> this industry sucks, but we're going to get better. And, you know, I, I look forward to, to, to figuring out ways to work together. That alone, you didn't promise anybody anything. You just acknowledge that they're here and in the industry. <laughs> How about that? Most people don't even get a knowledge that they're in the industry. It's, it becomes two separate industries. And trust me, there is no, it's a very loose black wedding thing because it's not enough to have a whole club. But why should there be two separate clubs? And I hate to say clubs, but, but and it, clearly there's organizations across the board, but the offer to, to even as an organization to say, we want to reintroduce who we are and what we're doing and invite those to come on and join, like I said, on webinars or on something with no cost, just to see who we are. And then you follow up with an email. This is who we are. And, but do your research. You know, there's, there's enough people out there. I see the same five black names all the time. Seriously. And I haven't been in that circle of weddings in a few years. And they were coming up behind me and I'm just starting five years later to see their name. If you know articles are being written, if you're writing blogs, reach out and go, hey, I'm doing something on custom. Hey, I'm doing something on culture. We'd love to write about you or just your experience in the, in the industry. Why not just write a blog that's, that, that's blanket? We want to speak about the experience of the wedding industry. We'd love for you to be part of that. Yeah, that's great. It seems so simple, but I think that s simple is still meaningful, right? It's still impactful. Like that's, that's where we're at right now and actually like, taking the action, taking the step to do that outreach. Um, and another, another question, and you talked about this, uh, you know, with the idea of, you mentioned internships and, and doing that outreach to the next generation, right? So that it's not five years down the road where we're looking at this and in the same position that we're in right now. And I'm curious, I'm going to tie it to your kind of your other side of experience with the corporate world, right? All these corporate companies that you're talking to, which a lot of them already have established internship programs, so to speak. And it's kind of expected of corporate America, whereas it's not necessarily expected of the events industry. And so kind of a twofold question, you know, one, what have you seen that some of these corporations will do that, that maybe we can learn from in terms of like creating an internship program or where they look to find those interns? And then second to that is how do we actually teach these, you know, how do we open our books, right? Like how do we become more open with our knowledge so that it's opening the opportunity doors to, to those interns? I've always had interns. So that's so funny to me to say that this industry doesn't have interns and maybe because I've always been corporate and I've always had a combination of both, but I've always taken interns because I always felt it was my responsibility to start teaching the next generation, regardless of color. And so reaching out, I mean, look how many Liz's group, your group, I just put it up. We're looking for interns, interested in weddings, interested in cultural weddings, whatever it is, just get it out on these, you know, Facebook pages. Look, you know, there's this thing called Google. And if you Google, right, <laughs> black weddings and black wedding designers, I bet you you'll find some. And being able to reach out and say, hey, we're looking for interns, just want to open it up. Or if you have friends, neighbors, whatever it is, start just letting people know you're looking for them. And you do it just like on trial basis. So, you know, you're very clear on what you're looking for. There would be times where interns only did research. 
Like I need a orange vase and it was the season of blue vases. So if you found me the orange vase, you were, you rocked because there was no orange vases anywhere. So give them true tasks to do that when they, when it comes back around, they actually see it accomplished. I ask them for ideas because see, they're not, I don't want to use the word jaded, but they're not so deep in it where they are not seeing what's new. Look at all the technology. Look what these kids just did with TikTok this past week. You know, how many of you have a TikTok thing that you can actually speak to a wedding to your couple about using and using fun videos and technology? So there's many ways that you can look for different interns to teach them along the way. It's not only about how to zip up a dress, but let's be honest, if you don't know how to zip up a dress and do it with a, a, knitting, a knitting needle to close those buttons, you haven't done a wedding yet. If you don't know how to go into a venue and look where the electrical plugs are, right? So there's so many levels of where you can teach from production to design to just how to handle the crazy mother, mother-in-law, second mother, great aunt, the grandmother, and every and the sister that's fighting with them. Conflict coaching. <laughs> so I, I think it's time to um, to just reach out to your network and say, hey, if you know, we're gonna start an internship and if you're interested, let us know. And if you have young people that's interested, let us know. It's interesting too. I feel like as you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, I've had conversations, so many people say, well, we're not having events right now. So like, what's the point of having an intern? Meanwhile, I mean, just, just in what you said right now, like there's so many things that we can virtually or even just kind of like simulate and take the time to truly teach and, I feel like as we teach the next generation, we're going to be teaching ourselves, right? Like the one thing that we, I would say as an industry, but some, obviously some companies are much better at this is that we lack is systems and processes, right? Like that's such a corporate concept. And a lot of us in weddings, like you just kind of grow in the industry and you learn by experience and you don't really put it on paper, but maybe this is the time where we, you bring on those interns and teach them while making something systematic, right? Well, like putting it on paper and saying, here's how we do a floor plan. And this is what we think about where the, where the electric plugs are. And why do we think about that? Because we have to talk to the band and make sure that they're not using the same power. And it's just, in, you know, I think if you start thinking of it in a different way and really maximize, not just, you know, the time that we have now, but the situation that we're in and, and wanting, needing to be more open with everyone, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Absolutely. What's your Instagram page look like? What's your Facebook page look like? What's your website look like? Does your website represent you wanting to expand into diversity? Think about it. The answer to that for most of are going to be no. So if you are, maybe there's someone that you know that can hold a champagne glass that has a black hand or a tan hand that's there. Take this time to, to shift a little bit. It's not faking it. It's people want to be represented, you know? So, which is funny again, because I'm saying, again, I'm black, but I've only done two black weddings. So it, it isn't about that. It comes down to talent, but you also, you know, someone said to me, someone black said to me, do you actually do black weddings? Because we don't see many black people on your site. And I was like, I do amazing weddings with amazing people. And I audition my couples as they audition me because I don't do drama. So that's the kind of weddings I do, no drama. You know, but there, there the is a, a culture there. Yeah, absolutely. And I have another question that came in. Um, and I think this is a matter of having a, this is hard, right? This is a hard conversation. And one of the things, and I think a lot of us who are, who are not black uh, struggle with this is, you know, finding a balance between wanting to genuinely diversify, present more opportunities. So diversify within the clientele that we have, but also present more opportunities to black people, to people of color. And there's this concern of not being genuine about it, right? So like using this time, like tokenism and, and kind of that idea of you're just doing this because you have to right now. And for those who don't know how to approach it the right way, and, and given the climate right now and what's happening, is the, do you have any recommendation for maybe how to position it so that the person on the other side, you know, whether it's the black person or, or you know, an intern, whoever it is, understands that it's coming from a place of genuine want to, to 
to learn and to grow and, and to open the, the doors of opportunity. Look, let's be honest. I don't expect all of you to go skipping down the yellow brick road tomorrow and you're like, let me find a black person. I'm good. Okay. Or say, this doesn't work for me at all. I am who I am and it works for me and I'm going to keep it moving. I'm, I'm a realist. But if you're going to decide that this is important to you or to your business, first, you have to be respectable. Two, you need to educate yourself. Then you have to be committed. This is not a knee jerk, you know, find a black person, color person, and I'm a partner with, and we're figured out, and oh, I can't be bothered, that's too much work. And you have to be accountable for what you say. So that's the conversation that you need to have with someone. I am trying to learn, and they're gonna tell you, go learn that on your own. So yes, start out with your own education, your own education about whether it's black weddings and traditions. You don't have to be an expert, but you have to have an understanding. But you have, who are you? What, again, what are you bringing to the table? It has to be from your spirit. I'll go back to have never seen Adam to today, but in an email, I felt his spirit. And I was like, cool guy, but like to know him. So when you come off genuinely, I think someone can feel that. When you're coming off as, oh, I need to jump on this bandwagon, I'm gonna get in trouble, and I don't want anybody to talk about me, and my other colleagues are doing it, so I'm going to do it. No, be conscious. Be conscious if there's a black um, wedding cake designer that if they are good, like anyone, that they get put in the mix when you're showing clients because all they're seeing is cake, you know, or florist. So it, everything, you're not going to run and change your business tomorrow. You are who you are. Be proud of your whiteness. Understand that your whiteness gives you privilege. And at this moment, the privilege is, the, is to invite others into a, an industry that they're sitting on the side. So educating yourself and again, opening the doors. When you're doing events, whether they're virtually or one day when we're allowed out and at the rate we're going, we're never going out because they're not letting people even in New York right now. Um, to make sure that, that your list is you've done some research and you've seen some pictures and you want to invite them to the event. And it's the same invite that you would send everyone else. It's not a, Hey, black person, come on through. It's the same invite you're sending everyone. And, 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 and you start that way. One of my biggest things that I love is that when I do my webinar, someone emailed me back and said, I've never seen the diversity inside these boxes that you do. And I'm like, it's not purpose for me. It's who I am. These are the people that I'm around or I've met through speaking. These are liked mind people. So you already have something in common. You're in the same industry. It's the same industry, but we are not equal within that industry. And that's what you have to understand. I'm not sure if I really answered that for you because it, it is an individual how you want to approach it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I can't speak for, for everyone who asked the question, but I think even like going back to, you know, I think it's fascinating that, you know, you've only done three, two, three black weddings and you've done so many Jewish weddings. And there's plenty of us on here, myself included, where yes, I, I do a handful of multicultural weddings, but I do quite a lot of those classic Jewish weddings. And I am Jewish and it's very easy for me to relate and to know but, you know, I've had to learn what a Chinese tea ceremony is and what that means and, and be, you know, genuine talking about it. And I'll ask the question for you, you know, when you were doing, like, if you, if you can remember, like, going back to your first, like, big Jewish wedding or, you know, kind of that mindset of not going after, I guess, like, more Black weddings, what was that like in your head? Or even like thinking about the vendors that you then worked with when you were doing the Jewish weddings or, or the clients and their perspective, what was that experience like? And, you know, I, I can imagine you took something from that that kept you moving in the direction of keeping a diverse network around you. I've always had a diverse network around me. I've always, I grew up with the star David, an Italian horn, a cross and a ballet slipper around my neck. You know, I'm dating myself again. We used to have little charms. Um, so I always, that was my life. I, I've always been in that. The funny thing is when I do Jewish weddings, I'm usually telling the family what they should be doing or what they shouldn't be doing to the point that one rabbi came and was just like, 
who are you speaking to? Because I was like, one bride did not want to cover her shoulders. She was not trying to cover that Vera Wayne gown. She was fighting with her mom. And I was like, let me explain it to you. You are not going underneath that hoover with me on my watch, which you got, you have to cover it. We don't have to do something. And no, Leslie, no, Leslie. And I said, call your rabbi. And <laughs> the rabbi was like, who is this person? Because every time they would fight with me, I was like, call the rabbi. And so the rabbi was like, oh my God, how do you know? I'm like, one, I have so many Jewish friends. Two, I've been to so many Jewish weddings. Three, I also educated myself when all my Chinese things is because I lived in, now I lived in Japan, which is different than a Chinese tea ceremony, but they, they found me from doing Chinese events and brought me over to start doing Chinese weddings. Because the, the one thing they said is, Leslie, we see that you respect our culture. So yes, I had to study to make sure I'm lining people up the opposite of when you're lining it up from, you know, and, and to have that knowledge and to make sure that again, that my staff, there was someone else that also was from that culture that I would bring on as a consultant to work with me, not the day of the wedding, but in advance of, you know, so it never was strange for me, uh, it was funny families would say, you know more than we know, you know? <laughs> um, and I'm like, you know, did you order the glass? Are you gonna use a light bulb? Do you have this? Do you have this? And you know, I would always ask all of that, the mix of, you know, do you have these things? Because it really was about understanding, again, expanding beyond my current culture to assure that I understand who I was speaking to. It's not about me. It's not my wedding, or we would be having lemon cake at every single wedding or passion fruit. So it's what do they need and what do they want? And I think if you look at it that way and you, you, you branch out and say, I'm doing this wedding, will you come work with me and, and bring someone that doesn't look like you as part of the team? And I think you know, to, that, to that point, one of the benefits one of one of the benefit one of the things that should be a benefit of WIPA and something that you know like I mentioned in the beginning we are working on is for a lot of us we come from one community right we're shelter to some extent if you're not from New York you know even more so and the, so if you come from that it might be harder to say well I don't know who to turn to to ask for this and with WIPA you know we bring together people from all sorts of backgrounds I know I mean I've known Priya for years now and if I, when I have questions on Indian weddings, I'm like, she's the girl that I call and vice versa. And so, you know, to, to your point, I think it really is a matter of us taking it, taking the responsibility as an association within the wedding, within the wedding industry to say, we really need to do our work to diversify who is in it so that we create this community. And so that, you know, the boxes that we have here, people mm -hmm. are diverse enough so that if someone is saying, I need to talk to someone who has done, you know, a black wedding or someone or a makeup artist that knows how to work with black brides or a florist or whatever the case may be that, that we have, that we're giving that opportunity. So build a network. Build yeah. a network. Absolutely. Building that work for sure. And, you know, to that too, it's like, uh, so we have Maya Jane on here who had told us that you had done her wedding. Hey Maya. I sure did. Yeah. You have like, <laughs> Perfect example right there of a bride who, you know, has worked with you and, and kind of had that experience and comes from a different background as well. So mel melding everything together is really where, where we need to go and what we need to do. Um, I think I have one more question before we go. And if anyone else has any questions, send them my way. But um, let's see. Uh, it is true that many fewer lack weddings, some may argue, I'm going to read this first before I read out loud. <laughs> Is, okay, it is true that many fewer black weddings, that there are many fewer black weddings, sorry. Uh, is there anything we can do or any steps we can take to diversify our clients? You know, it, I guess, big picture question, but you know, I, I would say maybe from an angle of marketing or again, networking and how we look at that. I think it's marketing, it is networking, it is again, what's your website look like? What's your you know, what are you saying? What's your wording? Are you saying multicultural, I hate that word, um, <laughs> weddings, but then you don't have anything that looks that way, or you don't even have a photo of a wait staff where you, you can't offer resources when you sit down and speak to them. 
So I think, again, you have to go back and, um, it, I, again, I, I hate to keep saying Google, <laughs> black hairstylists, wedding hairstylists, makeup artists, there are a list, you know, if you are passing, if you know someone that is a hairstylist or makeup artist, say, hey, have you worked with anyone that was good? Have you worked on a wedding that, you know, was multicultural? Are there good, pe are there people that we can start expanding our network in? Because no, they're not standing on the corner, granted, but there's tons of people that's out working. Um, look at black magazines. Uh, okay, dated myself again. I know there's no such thing as magazines. Go online, right? And pull up fashion magazines. Look at what stylists are doing. Some of them are, have, there's, um, no, and I don't know if it's still, I'm closing my eyes, Noir Weddings. So that was a, a black wedding um, magazine. And I think it's still online that has nothing but African-American weddings and um, hairdressers and makeup artists and, and all sort of thing. It's really, and photographers. There's so many different outlets. Again, just branch out your vendor list of options. Just put them in the mix, being in the mix of being, to be able to look at, you said World Bride Magazine, that's also one. Thank you, Mike. But just instead of doing the same, and I'm not cutting anybody's business off. I want you to be very clear. I, I, I'm in your shoes. I get that. When you work well with the team, you don't want to have to have a whole lot of conversation. You want to keep it moving. Everybody knows their part and let's go. But in order to as I said before, expand your knowledge base, you are going to have to share some of your wealth, some of your knowledge wealth, and, 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 and add on to what you already know, if that's so your desire, but you must be committed. And it's okay to say, I don't know. We're so used to telling the client, which, okay, 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 I know it, I do it, and you freak out. Just say, I don't know. If someone says, do you have this? Say, you know what? I, I may not have it today, but I work with other people that, are that, that have that. And begin to build your, your personal council of people that you can call and ask questions to or bring along with. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great, great perspective. I think those are all the questions we have. Any last bit of information you want to share with the group or anything that you think would be helpful for everyone to hear? I think the best thing is really examine yourself and your business first and don't knee jerk. Um, this is not a trend. Um, black folks aren't going anywhere. People of color aren't going anywhere. Figure out what again is my added value to partnering with someone and what's their added value to me. And then how can we do this together? And just take a step back sometimes and look and go, who are my vendors? Are there other vendors that I can add into the mix? And take the time to educate yourself and it will bring a stronger industry together. Amen. Couldn't have said that better. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, everyone. If you have any follow-up questions, you have our WIPA email, send them our way. We'll share them with Leslie. Um, but thank you so much for sharing. We really appreciate hearing your perspective and really educating us and more to come. More to come, definitely. This is not a one-time thing. I'm here for you all. Thank you. Absolutely, thank Thanks, you. Everybody. Thanks thank everyone. You. Have a great rest of the week. Bye guys. Thanks.